Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. By all means, continue to socialize, but I'd like to just say a few words. And if uh, certainly the people in the front room can hear me, that would be enough. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy this evening. My name is Danny Kwa, and I am Dean of the School. Minister Heng Sui Kiet, Minister for Finance Singapore. Minister Munia Majubi, Minister of State for Digital Affairs at the Ministry of Finance, France. Excellencies, distinguished guests and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to begin this last portion of a very productive France-Singapore set of engagements. This particular meeting brings together, on the one hand, in the small, the France-Singapore Economic Forum that has taken place over the last two days that the Lee Kuan Yew School has jointly organized with the Economic Society of Singapore, the French Circle of Economists, and we are very pleased at the productive atmosphere we have been, a productive atmosphere intellectual exchange we have been able to deduce from that. On the other hand, of course, this is also in the large, the closing reception of the France Singapore Year of Innovation. To mark this occasion, Ministers Heng Sui Kiet and Munia Majobi have kindly agreed to deliver each a closing address for us. Before I bring them on the stage, please let me just say a few words. Minister Heng Sui Kiet is Singapore's Minister for Finance. In this role, Minister Heng not only manages the national budget, but he oversees Singapore public, Singapore's public finances broadly construed. Minister Heng chairs Singapore's wonderfully named Committee of the Future Economy, obviously set up to be forward-looking on Singapore's growth trajectory. He chairs the National Research Foundation, the body that clarifies the direction ahead for Singapore's research, innovation, and enterprise. And just a couple more words. Before coming to his current portfolio, Minister Heng had previously served as Minister for Education, where among many other things, he led what was called our Singapore Conversation. That, as again the wonderful name suggests, was a nationwide consultation exercise on what Singaporeans aspired for the national future. And from even before entering politics, when he was Managing Director of the Monetary Authority of Singapore, the British magazine, The Banker, had named him Central Bank Governor of the Year in Asia Pacific. Turning to Minister Munir Majubi, he is responsible for digital affairs, attached to the French Ministries of Economy and Finance and Action and Public Accounts. We are extremely grateful to the ministers making the long trip to appear here at this event. This is an exceptional commitment to the unfolding conversation between our two nations. Before entering politics, Minister Munir Majubi was an entrepreneur and industry leader. He was president of the French Digital Council. He founded multiple startups. He founded organizations to lead, encourage, and foster groups of yet other startups. So in brief, he was a spark plug for the French ecosystem of innovation and digital platforms. Now in government, rather than private industry, Minister Munir Majobi carries responsibility from the other side of that regulatory divide. He is in charge of appropriate shepherding that ecosystem forwards now with an eye to social and national priorities, to responsible use of individual and social data. Please join me in welcoming our two ministers. First, Minister Heng will deliver his speech. Your Excellency, Munir Majobi, Secretary of State for Digital Affairs of France, Professor Houston Kwa, President of the Economic Society of Singapore, Professor Jean-Hervé Lorenzi, Chairman of Le SIC, the 
economists. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to all of you to Singapore, and uh, I'm very pleased to join you at the closing ceremony of the France Singapore Year of Innovation in Singapore, and the closing of the second uh, recon, recon uh, economic. <laughs> now, um, earlier on, you know, both you all had a very long day, and I, I'm sort of probably standing between you and the end of the conference. But I'm glad that I'm, I'm not the last speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Our Minister Majovi, when I had a chat with him earlier on, he uh, said, well, he's the, he was the youngest minister when he became minister. And he said, no, no, I'm no longer the youngest. I'm the second youngest. There's a minister of youth that is younger than him now. But both are still very young. Now, both Singapore and France believe that innovation is key to our future. Innovation enables us to better tackle the many social, economic and security challenges that we are facing. Hence, we are both seeking to make innovation pervasive throughout our society and investing significantly in these efforts. In Singapore, we have committed 19 billion Singapore dollars or about 12 billion euros over five years from 2016 to 2020 under our Research Innovation and Enterprise 2020 plan. Under the plan, the National Research Foundation and the Agency for Science, Technology and Research work closely with our research institutes, universities and industries to advance research and innovation. Singapore is also actively developing an ecosystem that brings together researchers, companies and government officials to transform Singapore into a vibrant R&D hub. We have also introduced 23 industry transformation maps that articulate our efforts to promote innovation, deepen capabilities and encourage partnerships in each of these 23 industry segments. Now, with our common emphasis, Singapore and France are natural partners in innovation. Former President Hollande and Prime Minister Lee issued a joint declaration on innovation between France and Singapore in 2017 and designated 2018 as the France-Singapore Year of Innovation. Over 60 events have been organized with the support of our respective embassies. By bringing together our businesses, entrepreneurs, researchers, students and officials, new areas of cooperation have been created. So let me just highlight a few of these. To support the cross-border exchange of startups, we launched the Singapore Innovation Alliance activities in Paris, the first in Europe, making the city a gateway for our startups in Europe. We also launched French Tech Singapore. It brings together French entrepreneurs in Singapore and supports their ventures into the Southeast Asian markets. This complements the Global Innovation Alliance activities in Paris. Singapore also made her debut appearance at the French tech convention Viva Technology in May 2018 with a large presence. A few months later, Secretary of State uh, Majobi led a delegation of French startups to the Singapore Week of Innovation and Technology, or we call it SWITCH. And this year, SWITCH will be combined with the Singapore FinTech Festival to be held in the same week in mid-November. So I welcome all of you to attend and to also participate in Slingshots at SWITCH, an international startup competition organized by Enterprise Singapore. To support further collaborations, Enterprise Singapore and BPE France launched the first France Singapore Core for Innovation projects. Applications for the first core will close on 31st March, and I strongly encourage French and Singapore companies to apply for this. Now I'm pleased to announce that following the year of innovation, France and Singapore have agreed to further our innovation partnership by setting up the France-Singapore Joint Committee on Science and Innovation. The committee will draw together the key players from both countries to foster partnerships with industry, develop their entrepreneurial ecosystems in France and Singapore, and promote greater exchange of research and innovation talents in areas of common interest. This initiative will support France's ambition to establish a dynamic innovation hub in Europe and globally and Singapore's drive to position Singapore 
as, the, as a global Asia node of technology, innovation and enterprise. So let us work closely together to support one another. And building on what we have achieved together, we can now move on to the next steps to collaborate on medium-term initiatives and to inject momentum for new initiatives. Our partnership in innovation builds on a close and broad-based relations over the years. French explorers, entrepreneurs and educators were in Singapore before Singapore's independence. And France was one of the first countries to recognise Singapore's independence in 1965. Since the establishment of diplomatic relations, France and Singapore have forged close and broad-based relations based on a shared worldview and common interests. Today, we enjoy robust cooperation in wide-ranging fields, including trade and investment, defence, education, culture, research and development, cybersecurity and energy. And I should add that our, the France, Ambassador of France to Singapore has been extremely active and we see him everywhere. <laughs> in 2018, France is Singapore's second largest EU trading partner in goods. While we are France's top trading partner in ASEAN, with total trade in goods amounting to about 21.3 billion Singapore dollars or 14 billion euros. More than 2,000 French companies are in Singapore, the second highest from an EU member state. Leading French companies in different sectors, such as Airbus, Bolleram Group, NG, Rocket, Schneider Electric and Thales have operations in Singapore and also use Singapore as a base for their Asian operations. There are about 20,000 French people in Singapore, the second largest in Asia. Singapore companies such as Escort Limited, City Developments Limited, Interplex and ST Engineering also have presence in France. The strong bilateral relations between Singapore and France demonstrate our openness to international partnerships. Last month, the EU-Singapore Free Trade Agreement and the EU-Singapore Investment Protection Agreement received the European Parliament's consent with a strong majority. Now, this marks a significant milestone in Singapore's and the EU's long-standing relationship and our shared commitment towards a rule-based rules -based multilateral trading system. The EU is Singapore's largest partner in services, third largest trading partner in goods, and our largest foreign investor. Over 10,000 EU companies are based in Singapore, making Singapore the top location for European investments in ASEAN. Similarly, Singapore is the EU's largest trading partner in both goods and services in ASEAN. The new trade and investment agreements will expand economic opportunities for EU and Singapore companies across many sectors by eliminating tariffs, improving market access for trade in services and opening up government procurement opportunities and raising the level of protection for investors, we can take our economic relations to a higher level. So we look forward to the expeditious entry into force of these agreements and thank France for your support for this agreement. Now, one of the key questions I understand that you have discussed over the last two days at this forum was, what is the model of globalization that benefits everyone? I attended the World Economic Forum annual meeting in Davos in January this year. The theme, Globalization 4.0, shaping a global architecture in the age of the fourth industrial revolution, is similar to what you have been discussing at this forum. Now, having an open dialogue amidst a changing economy and geopolitical landscape is timely. Support for globalization is declining and some are questioning its value. People feel that they have been left out, they have been left behind. They are frustrated that wages are stagnating, political systems are malfunctioning and lives are not improving. The yellow vest demonstration in France are just one of the more recent manifestations of this angst. Similar discontents have erupted elsewhere, be it Brexit in the UK, the debates surrounding the 2016 presidential, US presidential elections, or the loss of support for moderate political leaders and centrism in the West. The decade of expansion post-global financial crisis appears to be coming to an end. 
global growth is expected to slow in 2019, what do economists term globalization? The IMF has revised its projection for global growth in 2019 downwards from 3.7% to 3.5%. At the same time, the global economic weight is shifting towards Asia. And there's increasing strategic competition among countries in different areas, as reflected in the US-China trade tensions. And amidst a resurgence in nationalist and protectionist sentiments around the world, we must continue to defend the rule-based multilateral trading system, which has been painstakingly built up over many decades. And we should improve the system where necessary. Ultimately, a rules-based global system is key to peace and prosperity for the world and our people. And I must say that in that regard, we are very glad that you know, President Macron has been very, very supportive of this globalization and what he's doing in France. And Singapore has always supported an open, rule-based multilateral trading system as embodied in the World Trade Organization. Being connected to the global market has allowed us to ride the wave of globalization. We grew from a third world city to a modern metropolis. Globalization opens up opportunities for our people. Singapore also strongly supports other multilateral platforms and international processes, such as the UN, G20 and APEC, as well as our commitment to ASEM, the Asia-Europe meetings, which brings together countries for international cooperation and strengthen ties. Besides trade, all countries face common challenges, such as counter-terrorism, climate change, and aging population, which are best tackled together. In a world that is rapidly changing and increasingly interconnected, countries need to collaborate. No country has, the, has all the expertise it needs. We'll all need to find new solutions to future-proof our infrastructure, manage rising healthcare costs, and rethink the role and future of education. I'm glad that France and Singapore are both committed to strengthening international cooperation and working with like-minded countries to identify solutions to these challenges. In conclusion, I'm confident that France and Singapore will continue to take our partnerships to the next level. The France-Singapore Year of Innovation has proven to be a very fruitful initiative. It has shone a spotlight on the complementarities and synergies between our innovation ecosystems and created greater opportunities for collaboration. The conclusion of the Year of Innovation marks a new phase in our innovation partnerships. The establishment of the France-Singapore Joint Committee on Science and Innovation will help our research institutions, universities, businesses and startups to produce better results and outcomes to benefit our two countries and peoples and to contribute to the broader global development. So I'm glad that Racon's economic and the final events in the France Singapore Year of Innovation has brought together leading academics, government officials, and business leaders to have a frank dialogue on the challenges of Industry 4.0 and Globalization 4.0. Indeed, the approach will tackle these challenges and to reap the benefits of Industry 4.0 and Globalization 4.0 will require greater partnerships at different levels and with different stakeholders. So platforms like this forum are therefore important for us to exchange ideas, reach out to one another and work together. No one has all the answers to the challenges that, lies ahead of, that lie ahead of us and by working together, we can achieve better outcomes and build a more peaceful and prosperous world. So thank you very much and thank you for your presence. Thank you, Minister Heng. Now it's my great pleasure to welcome Minister Munir Majuri to the stage. Bonsoir à toutes et à tous, dear Minister Hank Swicky, ladies and gentlemen, dear all. Today 
I'm very happy to be here in Singapore because we were talking about all the exchange we have, but it's always a, a story of people. And I've been a minister for two years, and when I was appointed, only a few days after I was appointed, my first official visit, visit was from your colleague, Sim Ann. And she came to my office and we discussed about the future of innovation and the relationship that our two countries could have. It was before the beginning of uh, the innovation year, and she offered me a gift. She offered me a, a, a beautiful white ceramic in blue, but what is painted of, on this ceramic is a representation of innovation and technology. It's using craftsmanship to represent the advanced technology. It's right behind my office. I look at it every day, and I think of our relationship every day. <laughs> so thank you again. Thank you. I also had the chance to be here in Singapore a few months ago for Switch, and I also had the chance to welcome your, whole, uh, your prime minister and uh, uh, nearly half of your government with, our pres with President Macron and uh, our prime minister, Edouard Philippe. Today, I would like also to say thank you to the people who are involved in this year, who are involved to this uh, event today. I would like to thank uh, Houston Kwa and Manu Bakskaran from the Economic Society of Singapore, and Jean Hervé Lorenzi and Claire Vincent from the Cercle des Economistes. Merci beaucoup. And Danny Kwa, Dean of the Lee Kwan New School, thank you again for organizing this event and welcoming us today. I also would like to thank all the panelists. I had also, and I will have to tell you the truth, uh, a summary of your intervention, but I didn't get the time to read them. But uh, it was told me that uh, they were at the highest level today, and I would like to, to thank you for the participation you had. This year, the Rencontre Economique marked the closing of the 2018 France-Singapore Year of Innovation. As long-time partner, we believe that innovation can transform tomorrow's economy and society, and that innovation is the answer to challenges we, we are facing today, only if we are able to integrate everybody in it. And I'd like to thank you, Minister, when you made these uh, few remarks on the question and the challenge that uh, advanced economies has to include everybody. And the yellow vest moment we had in France was also a moment of discussion throughout the country to say that technology has to have something for everyone in the country, wherever they live, wherever they come from. So I'd like to uh, share with us uh, a few of the values that we have in common. We are both countries of efficiency. Uh, sometimes we are, uh, you are caricaturized for that. France, not necessarily enough, but we are countries of efficiency. <laughs> we are countries of trust. And I think trust is the next, next biggest uh, 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 money in the world. And trust cannot be negotiated. Trust uh, is built uh, on the long time. And uh, we build trust together. But we are also producer of trust for the rest of the world. And that's something that is important for both of our country. And we also believe in multilateralism. And we believe that it's the only way if we want to build a, a world of peace. So the first ambition of this joint year was to be more, even more efficient together. This is why France and Singapore launched this joint venture, this joint innovation year with the ambition of generating new partnership between our, our ecosystems and accelerating the launch of joint forward-looking project. 60 events were organized in both countries thanks to the strong involvement of the entire business and scientific ecosystem. And I would like to thank you, everyone, and especially our ambassador, who had a truly great advocate for Singapore in France and of France here in Singapore. So thank you again. One example uh, was the launch of the Global Innovation Alliance program in France. I was very happy to uh, welcome you in Paris uh, when you launched it. It was a really important moment because for some of the startups there, that was the first time they were thinking of Singapore as a hub of development for them. And by launching this program at Station F, one of the largest uh, eco, uh, uh, accelerators in France, uh, a lot of entrepreneurs there listened and understood that Singapore was a place uh, to develop their business. Um, with nearly 600 members, Business France and French Tech Singapore here have launched the French Tech Singapore community. It's a very important moment for us. When it has been launched, we were not sure that we had uh, uh, such numbers of entrepreneurs here. With 600 members, this is one of the largest and most active French tech ecosystem in the world. 
I'm very happy with that. I, I, I had the chance this year to uh, welcome and inaugurate nearly uh, 20 of them all around the world. The French tech ecosystem and the French tech local, uh, uh, local communities are really important because they are both a place for French people who want to innovate and who want to, entre to, create, to be entrepreneur in a country, and at the same time, a junction between this community and the local community of entrepreneurs. And here in Singapore, there were everything to make it a success. A second field that is really important and that is more specific to my job is uh, what everything we do in the digital field and the ambition we share. When we try to summarize it in a sentence, we want to build together a more sustainable digital future based on trust. And trust is a very important currency. And between a laissez-faire policy and a state-controlled policy, there are another way to build a sustainable digital future with trust. And this is at the heart of all the discussion we have together. It's not an easy one. It's paved of multiple challenges. We do now have challenges in France with hate content online, with the control of violent content and terrorist content online, where your values are always questioned every day, but where you have to believe, two days ago was the 30 years anniversary of the web, uh, you need to believe in your value, you need to know what you want to build for the future. And I am sure that uh, Ron President Macron and with Prime Minister Li Xianlong, when they had this discussion on a roadmap for digital innovation, internet governance, and cybersecurity in July 2018, during the visit of PM Li to France, this discussion was really intense and really important. And the next step of this discussion will be a, a very important moment in the building of this uh, shared, uh, of this shared uh, uh, vision. But moreover, there are new areas of scientific cooperation that have been opened, like artificial intelligence, circular economy, health, and space, the new space. We are very glad to officially announce the creation of the Joint Committee of Science and Innovation between our two countries. A first between our two countries, a sustainable platform to develop a common strategy for scientific and technological cooperation by implicating researchers, organizations, universities, and companies. A lot of the members are here today, and I would like to thank you for all the work you've made the last few months to make it uh, possible. Today, we also launch the France Excellence Internship Program. It will be for Singaporean students. It will be co-founded by the French government, French companies, and Singaporean universities. This new program will bring young talent from Singapore to France and help to strengthen university industry ties. A series of prestigious scientific lectures will be implemented in our two countries in the coming months with the support of Paris Sciences et Lettres Université, the Collège de France, and the National Research Foundation from Singapore. Again, thank you for all the actors. I see uh, some of them here. Uh, it will be really important, you know, when you uh, uh, open the door of your universities. This is uh, when you really create uh, very long-term links between uh, your two countries. Finally, both of our countries believe in multiculturalism. That was my introduction, and that's maybe the most important point for the coming years, and to uh, uh, see together how the region and how the world is transforming. Both of our countries believe in finding solutions together because both are committed to protect our planet, reducing inequalities, building together a governance model based on openness and fair rules, and that will benefit to everyone. Some might think that the need to cooperate and to propose collective solutions is less pressing than 10 years ago, but we are wrong. And if we think the unilateral way of the protectionist, then we can't work. Rather, we should keep working together, harder than ever, towards finding more efficient multilateral solutions and I think we can count on Singapore to push this agenda forward for the region and even further. So with no further ado, I'd like to officially conclude this France-Singapore Year of Innovation and reaffirming tonight France's commitment alongside Singapore to defend our mutual ambition. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Your Excellency. <laughs>